answer all this question, it will take till tomorrow morning. <laughs> but I'll try to give you small answers as much as we can. There are many questions in this one, I have to choose only one. Huh? So how do I know who my master is? This is a very interesting question. Because very often people ask this question. Huh? Yesterday, I don't know, this Maharaj is I don't know his name. There is this Maharaj which was earlier here. He was telling his story. This Maharaj have met how many saints? 400? 582. Oh, okay. 582 saints. And every time the saints wanted to, in, to initiate him. But he never felt to be initiated by any. No? You see, this is very important to understand. Many gurus are there. And there are many masters, you know, you are land in the land of saints. Then our sadhus, men of well, even avatar come. Of course, people always understand in their own way. So it's very important to understand why I was telling the story of Anand Maharaj because he met 582 saints. And all of them wanted to initiate him. But he didn't felt to be initiated by any of them. Because he also felt, yes, I would be initiated only if there's a certain thing will tell me a specific mantra. That was his uh, point. And then uh, the grandfather of uh, Vidya, uh, she, her, father, her grandfather also was a saint. Uh, it was, and then his grandfather gave him that diksha, mantra diksha. And he knew that this is my Guru Dev. Very often, especially nowadays, you will see this many paths which people tend to follow. You know, people very often are not really fixed in one path. You know, they like to take from here. Of course you are searching. As long as you are searching, you keep looking until you find what you are looking. And when you find what you are looking, there will be no doubt into it. But if you are still searching, Doubt will always be there. There will not be this inner satisfaction. You may be satisfied in the outside, but you will not be satisfied in the inside. There will be something missing. In spite of following and doing what the Master is telling you, but yet this insatisfaction will still be there. But once you meet your Guru, that insatisfaction disappeared. And that, that yes, doesn't matter. I know he is my girl. Oh, she is my girl. Doesn't matter. And that person will give you that feeling, yes, you belong to me and I belong to you. And often, like we say, it's not, we may have that desire you know, to find our master, but in actually, it is the master I find. When we look at the life, you know, I will tell you, it was not me who was looking for him. Uh, and he came to look for me. <laughs> Actually, when you are born, if your guru is here, there is this connection. And that connection is not for now. You know, it's a long-term connection. And through that long-term relationship that you have, where is your master? From wherever you are, your master will come to you. There was a saint who he was doing katha. He was going from one village to the other.
One fine day, he said to one of his disciples, I want to go to that forest. A random forest was full of tigers and everything. But Maharaj, why do you want to go there? No, I want to do katha there. You want to do katha for who would you do katha? So there's nobody living in that forest. If you don't want, I'm going me. People Maharaj came down and started walking in the deep forest and of course everybody started following him. They were following him. It would start getting dark. When it started getting dark, you see all the sound get amplified. Even the little sound which during the day will not frighten you, at night it becoming very frightening. So this Guru Maharaj said, listen, you all stay here, I will be just be here. So he went and sat. As he sat down, a tigress came. When the tigress came, they all went to panic. The tiger will attack him. So the tigress came quietly and gently, sat next to Guru Maharaj. They didn't speak about anything. She, he just patted her on the head. And the Guru Maharaj, the tigress lay her head at the feet of the Guru. And she left the body. So the disciple was looking. And they were marveled, they were amazed, you know. But the Guru had come from far away just for this tigress to die at the feet of the Guru. So they were very curious, they asked Maharaj, please tell us. We do not understand you when you said you want to go into that forest, you know, we judge you. But you have your reason. So then I said that Tigris was my disciple. Many lives back. But he was cursed because he, did, he was killing tiger at that time. He was a great king. And because of that, he had to be born. So he was born as a tigress. And because of that, it was time for me to liberate him, to free him from this birth. So I came there. So wherever you, wherever you are, the master knows you. You may not know the Master. To recognize the Master is very difficult. Uh, with your limitation, you will project your limitation upon the Master. When you project your limitation of the ma- uh, upon the Master, what will happen? You will create a blood. No? You will create sin. So, best is to how do you will know your master? Is in the way you take shelter of the, of the saints. Just surrender. Don't ask any question. If you trust, if you are taking surrender, surrender means to have you given yourself completely. No? So you are not there. So it's not about you. So whatever he wants to do, it's up to him. You trust that he is your master, then he will help you and do that. And like I said, you will get to know your master when you have this inner satisfaction. Then as long as you don't have that inner satisfaction, you will keep searching. Short. Then you can short. <laughs> I don't think
end with this, but we can't finish it. <laughs> you see, Mahatma Babaji actually, like I said, it's not us who look for the Guru. It's the Guru that you look for the disciple. And this is the same thing for me with Mahatar Babaji. He came to me when I was five years old. Most of you know the story already. I will tell it for the people who don't know. Mahatma Babaji, when I was five years old, I drank, I ate some poisonous seed actually. And I was admitted in the hospital. And in the hospital, one fine day, there was this young fellow standing outside the window. And he was giving sweets to all the children. I also went there and funny is that I asked him one question, why are you here? <laughs> it's a bit strange, you know. So I asked him, why are you here? He said, I'm here for all these children and I'm here especially for you. And uh, he called my hand and he gave me one suit and one ruby. But for a child, this one would be for a lot of money. Uh, 40 years ago, not 40 years ago, 35 years ago. <laughs> I remember I used to collect cents to buy sweets. So this one rupee was really a lot. Though I was not really interested in the sweets, but the one rupee. Was happy I was already have, well, for sure having some idea what to do with that. <laughs> so, he all my hand and gave me this. And uh, the next question he asked me, do you know who you are? He asked this to a five years old kid, you know, he would not understand anything. He didn't understand what he was talking about. Uh, I was just looking at the rupee, making my own uh, agenda, what I would buy with this for sure. <laughs> So, then he said, without turning, pointing behind his head, he said, do you see the light? And I was looking, you know, by the window of that hospital, you could see a pillow. And I was looking everywhere for a light. And I couldn't find any light. So, I said, no. I don't find any light. Mm -hmm. Then he bent down, looked in my eyes, and he said, look properly. The second time when I looked, I saw like the sun. And around it, there was a, like a halo of light. Very often you will see that around the sun when it's showing. There is a, Little rain, you will see like around, around the sun. So similar, all the rain, he said, that's you. After he said, that's you, how long, it was so beautiful to look at. How long does that last it? I have no idea. But when I came back to him, he just said, listen, I have to go. Your mom and your auntie is coming. He just lift his hand and he disappeared. Eventually my mom and my auntie came and I, and I told my mom, you know, there was this man outside who was giving sweet and he gave me this rupee and uh, he just disappeared. You know, when you tell this to your parents, your parents said, oh, this is children's story. Said, oh, yes, yes, it was one of your uncle, you know, in, uh, how it is, you know, everybody's uncle, everybody's auntie. <laughs> it is one of your uncle. Okay, that's fine. I'll tell you. So this is how he came to me. 
And for me, I didn't have this longing or knowing about who the Guru is, you know, because from Mauritius, we don't have this tradition, even if we come from a native family. But Gurus don't go to Mauritius. And uh, that's how the first time he came to me. And the second time he came to me once more was by the dentist. And uh, <laughs> I don't know the story. And the dentist put an injection in my tooth. And I didn't want the dentist to take the tooth out. And I was so, what I did, I. Because you know the dentist, when you have to put the tooth inside, the hand was inside, so I bit his finger, and I'm not let go of it. And my mom was so angry, she gave me a good slap. And the dentist said, No, don't slap him, you know. I said, No, he did not him, you know. You don't want that it. Next time you can remove the tooth. So he sent me out. And when I came out, crying, of course, my mom was paying the dentist. When I came out, the same man was standing outside. And he told me, oh, you've been naughty. And I was crying. And all of a sudden, my mom came, just driving me. <laughs> and she was not too happy. So he dried, she dragged me. And I said, Mom, look, this is the same uncle from the hospital. And my mom looked behind, there was nobody. So like that, many instances he was there. Of course, I didn't know who he was. He was a, just an uncle which was there always. Uh, so like that, you know, Guru, from far away, they look after. The disciple. You may not notice it, but they are there. Yeah. Their eyes is always on who belong to them. And once you get to know about it, you know, then you can put the puzzle together, you know, each pieces. You know, is that you were there. There were not a single time that I was alone. So like that, many times, yeah, he was there with me, until he revealed that all this was just his, being near there. So like that, in the disciple and the devotee's life, the Guru is always with them. They may not notice the presence of the Guru, but it is there, just like the mother birds, you see. When we look at nature, you see the birds, they will come and feed the little one. No? When the, the moment the little babies are crying, the mother birds will come and feed. But when the mother birds knows that the bird, little birds can fly, what, ha what does it do? Even when the little birds are crying for food, the mother birds will not come. So that means that the mother birds will not stay around. But they want the bird to fly. Otherwise the bird will never fly. So when the birds feel so hungry, what they do? They jump from very high from the nest itself. Sometimes it can be very fatal, you know, and you can fall down and die. But nevertheless, the mother bird stay always there. Once when uh, I was small, there was a coconut tree in my grandma's place. Actually, I grew up with my grandma. There was a coconut tree. On that coconut tree, there was a nest for a crow. So, down there was uh, some vegetables which my parents planted. And uh, one fine day, my mom was cutting some vegetable, and one little baby crow fall down. I told my mom, said, okay, poor little crow, let me go and help. And she was going to take the little baby crow. 
the moment she approached the baby crow, the father and mother crow they started attacking her. <laughs> they were flying over her head. She had to run away. So you see, just like that, you know, gurus always look after. And when you are ready to receive that grace, you know, to receive him, because you have to be ready. If you are not ready, the guru may pass ten times in front of you. You will not feel anything, you will not recognize him. Just like Arjun, you know, until he was made ready on the battlefield, then Krishna could reveal his cosmic form. No? If Krishna would reveal his cosmic form already before and said, okay, now I am God to go and fight, do you think he would fight? No. That mindset must change. That mindset must be ready to receive it. After people say, why, you know, Mahatma Babaji, everybody talk about why we don't sing. But are you ready to sing? No, you're not. The same thing, to handle a guru is not an easy thing. It's a very difficult task to ask him. <laughs> Why is it difficult? Because the guru perceives a different reality of who you are. You perceive one reality of how, how you are. You know? But the guru perceives more what you can understand about yourself. The deepness of who truly you are. That's what the guru sees. You know, when you take a diamond, for example, in nature, it looks like a normal stone. How many of you have seen a raw diamond? Have you ever seen a raw diamond? No? It's like a stone. You will not recognize a diamond if you put a, a bunch of stone together and in the middle you put a raw diamond. If you don't, doesn't have that knowledge about diamond, you will not know this is a diamond. Unless you are the, the one which is digging, then you can perceive it. But a diamond dealer, they look at the diamond, they will know this is a diamond. The shape, the form of it, before you it will be a stone. Like that, how many of you will hear stories, people walking on the street, you know, they just knock a stone. Oh, it's a beautiful stone, you know. For them, it's a beautiful stone. But what? That stone is nobody knows. So like that, you know, the guru perceived the diamond that you hold inside of you, but not the rough diamond. The rough one, only the outside. He perceived the cut one. So this is a beautiful stone. I can do something wonderful from that. And you will take that and you will polish. Doesn't mean that polishing will be very easy. Because you see, very often people who gone to spiritual power, they think that, yes, I'll take shelter to the Guru, it will be very easy. No, it is not an easy task. You know, the Guru, the duty of the Guru is to polish the diamond and make it shine. Do you think the diamond comes just like this shining? No, in the nature, no, it doesn't. It been cut, polished, and what the diamond went through, if the diamond can open the mouth and talk to you, you will get scared. <laughs> You know, you wear gold on, no? Nah? Beautiful. Jewelry, beautiful. You know what the, the, the story of the, that gold, I have to tell you what the, it went through? From nature to go directly to a furnace and cook thousands of degrees, you know, to remove all impurity. Then that gold get pure. I think the diamond got polished, got cut. The same thing with the pot itself. So this is the duty of the Guru to do. To polish what the Guru see inside. There is this beautiful story of the saint. He gave a stone philosophical stone philosopher to a disciple of him and say to the disciple, go to the marketplace and ask each one for the value of that stone. 
but please don't sell it. No matter what the value is, don't sell it. So he wrote, he did has according to the guru, he went to a potato seller. And the potato seller looked at the stone, no more. He said, okay, I'll give you to potato bag. He came back and said, you live. He, the potato seller is offering to potato bag. He said, now you go again. He went to a close shop, you know. And the close man said, okay, I'll give you 10 meters of clothes for that. So I'll go on. Finally, he went to a jeweler. The jeweler looked at the stone and said, oh wow, this is a very precious stone. I'll give you 100,000 for that. I said, wow, 100,000. But Maharaj has said, not to sell. Of course, that greedy jeweler wanted to have that stone. Okay, I will tell it to the king. So he went to the king and said to the king, Look, he has this stone. It's a very precious stone. I don't know which kind of stone, but it's a very big the, the diamond. So, but when the king looked, called the kings and the guard there, and they called the, bring the man to the court. And when the king asked to see the stone, when he saw the stone, of course, the king had different knowledge, more knowledgeable than the jeweler. So he saw that this stone is not a normal stone, not even a diamond, it's a figure of a stone. You know, a stone which touch any metal and transform it into gold. And the king looked at it, and the, yeah, the, the, the disciple said, my king, what would you give for that stone? He said, I will give you half of my kingdom for that stone. And everybody was shocked. At the same time, the Guru came and he said, Well, now you've got your answer. The potato will offer potato for that. The people value you according to what they have inside of them. You know, people will look at you not for who you are, people will look at you for what they have inside of them and project it upon. But Guru and he will look at you, he will perceive what you have inside of you. It is not for his judgment, but it's for who you truly are and what you have inside of you. It's not about how you, you can't see that in the Guru. You know? Because very often when you say, yes, how will I know that this is a my master? You will project only your limitation upon your master. You can't perceive the greatness of Guru. You can't perceive who they truly are. The only the limitation which your mind perceives is that will be projected. So when you have that inner feeling, that's why when people come to me when they take initiation, the first thing I will ask them. I would not ask them what they are thinking. Because thinking are many. People think so many things. You know, that I you know, especially when you go on the spiritual path, at the beginning it's very trendy, very glamorous, very beautiful. Yes or no? Yes. Huh? And then as you proceed, you find that oh my goodness, it's very difficult. Do you perceive into that or not? That's why it is, when they come, you know, when you take initiation, I always ask them firstly, what do you feel inside of you? Because your feeling is very important. More than your thinking, your feeling. Because your feeling is something which is coming from inside, from your heart, my itself. And that feeling can't be wrong. Thinking can be wrong, but feeling can't be wrong. And your feeling, nobody is telling you how to feel. No? I can I tell you feel like this now or feel like that now? You will learn that. You can't change. No? For example, somebody tells you, you know, you 
you like you don't like mango. Hmm? I start and then you start liking that mango now. Can you change your feeling instantly? You can't change your feeling instantly. No? Feeling is something which awake inside of you. When it awake, it is from your heart and itself. And this can't be wrong. Because it is from your truth, from that truth which is deeply anchored within the self itself. And through that feeling, you will recognize that this is my goal. And the Guru will just confirm it. You know, by you asking your Guru Maharaj to have that feeling, is it like that? If the Guru confirm, then surrender. And if Guru, you don't belong to the Guru, there will be no connection. Of course, you will receive the blessing because Guru is, doesn't matter who they are, they are the carrier of the grace now. And they give freely the blessing to everybody. Then receive the blessing of the Guru. 